Hey Math One, I'm just putting this video out here so you guys have um, kind of a, a tidy summary of what we talked about for the 8.10 notes last, I believe Friday it was. Um, so, so these are the four kind of prototypes for graphing basic exponential functions, where your base is always a whole number, two of them have negatives out front, two of them have negatives for the exponent. And I just wanted to get down sort of like, what's the visual when you see an equation like this so that you can always kind of check yourself intuitively and not just always have to fill in the table. So you don't really need these notes to do the 8.10 homework. You can still use your calculators to generate all the points, plot them, plot the horizontal asymptote and so on. But, uh, but yeah, this is just gonna help you and you should study it for our test over chapter eight. So when you, when you talk about two to the x power, um, that's a pretty basic function, which if you plug in points, looks like this, all right? It's our basic curve that we saw on day one, where if it's a positive base and a positive exponents, you're given a regular case for exponential exponential functions. So positive base, that's the two, positive exponent, which is the x there. I'm going to get rid of this. I really don't need that. Positive exponent. We'd call this a regular case. Okay. Now, what do you think it's going to look like if we make, if we make the exponent negative? So, so here we've got a positive base and a negative exponent. Well, if you recall, plugging in negative numbers makes that negative turn into a positive. So it's sort of like plugging in negative three means it's two to the negative negative three power. That's two to the three power. That'd be left three because that's what you plugged in for the x up eight. Yeah, and then when you plug in negative two, you go up to four because it's like two squared. And then down to two, zero, half, fourth, and so on. So, oh. So how can we describe what's happening here? Well, it looks like a mirror image has occurred. It looks like it flipped completely itself over the y-axis. This has a specific name. From here to here, you would call this a horizontal mirror or reflection. Yeah. Let's check out what happens when you put a negative base. So a negative base, but still keep a positive exponent positive exponent. Well, putting a negative out front basically says all of your y values are going to be flipped over the x-axis. So if you recall, if I take 2 squared, I get 4. This is saying make that 4 negative. So if I plug in a, a 2, I get 1, 2, 3, 4 below. If I plug in a 1, I get negative 2 to the 1 power below, and then negative 1, negative a half, negative a quarter. You can check these on your calculator just to, just to keep me honest here. So everything seems to have been flipped from regular case to below the x-axis. And since we are flipping from top to bottom, it's sort of like instead of horizontally, reflecting, we're going to be vertically reflecting. So this is a, a vertical reflection 
of, again, our regular case. Yeah. So then, if you put a negative in front of your base and a negative in front of your exponent, you're just going to have both of those reflections happening at once. You're going to have a horizontal reflection followed by a vertical reflection. So it's going to start at negative 2, negative 4 instead. This one's going to be over here now. This point's going to be over there. 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. And then we're going to have this set up. So this would be called... a vertical and horizontal reflection. And when we say it's a reflection, it's a reflection of the regular case, y equals 2 to the x. 2 to the x. Okay. Yeah, so negative base and a negative exponent creates this situation. This is going to be super helpful when you guys get to math 2 because you'll be talking all about reflections and shifts, uh, stretches, shrinks, all sorts of stuff. This is just going to give you guys a, just a little bit of a baseline to move forward with that. Now, this is great, but I'm going to take it one step further. So. Remember, okay, recall, so here's our little thought bubble here. Remember when we had fractional bases? Yeah, those showed up every once in a while. Well, turns out that this fractional base actually matches the pattern of one of these. Take a moment to think to yourself which one you think it actually is. Let me pause the video. All right. Let's think about this. What does it mean to be one half to the x power? Well, I can distribute the x to both parts. Remember our properties of exponents? You could, you could distribute the outside exponent to both the, the top and bottom of a fraction. So this is like one to the x power over 2 to the x power. That's fine. You can, you can do that. Ah, and then what's 1 times itself any number of times? It's just 1. Oh, OK. So now the question is, which of these would manifest itself, or which one of these would would basically create the same table of values as this one. It turns out 2 to the negative x does the exact same thing as 1 over 2 to the x because negative exponents pretty much move to positive when you, go, when you put them in the bottom part of the fraction. This equals 2 to the negative x. Yeah. So when you think about a horizontal reflection of 2 to the x, you need to think not only of y equals 2 to the negative x, but also, and I'll put it in a different color just to, to highlight the, I don't know, what do you want to call it? The dichotomy, the difference, insert a big word there <laughs> that illustrates that these two are, are kind of different because they look different, but they are identical. And look at the, look at the, Look at the defining characteristics. 2 became a half. I flipped it. Negative x became positive x. So the question is, do all I need to do is flip the fraction and make the exponent opposite to get this, this, and this? And the answer is, yeah. So the alternate equation version of this regular case is flip it. Positive x becomes negative x.
the alternate version of this case, you still gotta make the outside base negative, but it, I just, I flip this fraction. I flip the two and make it a half, and then positive x becomes negative x. These yield the same value. Plug them both in your calculator. Fill out the table for the black equation, fill out the table for the red equation. They are the same points. And then of course the same thing's gonna happen over here. Y equals, still got a negative base, you can't, you can't detach the positivity or the negativity away from the bases, okay? Make sure you don't do that, I know it can get tricky. Well, we're changing the exponent, not the base sign, okay? Make the two a half, make the negative x into a positive x. So, in conclusion, this is what I want you guys to get out of the 8.10 notes. All of this information encapsulates that curve, okay? This curve is created because of that, is described by that, and is defined by one of two equations with this kind of structure. So if you saw y equals 5 to the negative x minus 12, you should be seeing this curve pattern because it's got a positive base to a negative x. And it's just got an asymptote somewhere other than zero. This information all matches together. This information all matches together. And this information all matches together. If there's anything you need to really study this chapter to get a, a really deep inside of you understanding of this stuff, this is it, at least for the graphing exponential functions. All right, 12 minutes. I think I've hit my expiration date on this video, so I am just going to end it there. Thanks for watching. Email me with any questions you may have.